At the conclusion of each NFL season, a team emerges as the Super Bowl champion. While winning the Super Bowl is a prestigious achievement, it doesn't always mean the victorious team was the league's best. In fact, some champions are more mediocre than exceptional, with one standout example being the 2001 New England Patriots. Surprisingly, this team, which marked the beginning of the Patriots dynasty, is considered one of the worst Super Bowl winning teams. In 2001, Tom Brady, a relatively unknown sixth round pick drafted 199th overall the previous year, was thrust into the starting position. Back then, Brady was far from the household name he is today. Picture this, the 2001 Patriots, starting the season with an unimpressive 0-2 record and ranked as the worst team in the NFL. Their best player, Drew Bledsoe, suffered an injury, leaving the team in the hands of the untested Brady. Although they improved to a mediocre 5-5, the Patriots lacked a standout defense and offensive weapons. Their defense even allowed the sixth most points in the NFL, making them far from formidable. In the latter half of the season, they managed to secure wins, albeit mostly against weaker teams. The pivotal moment came in the playoffs, notably with the tuck rule benefiting them. Originally called a fumble, the rule was overturned to an incomplete pass, allowing the Patriots to retain possession. This stroke of luck propelled them to tie the game and eventually win it in overtime. Entering the Super Bowl as massive underdogs against Kurt Warner's greatest show on turf, the Patriots pulled off a surprising low-scoring victory. This team, despite lacking star power and statistical dominance, marked the beginning of a dynasty. Describing the Raiders, they were middle of the pack, ranking 16th in yards gained on offense and showcasing a defense with mixed performances. While they were the fifth best team in passing touchdowns allowed, they struggled in other aspects ranking 19th in passing yards allowed and 22nd in rushing touchdowns allowed. To exploit their vulnerabilities, opponents could adopt a strategy of primarily passing until reaching the red zone and then capitalize on the run for a score. However, the Raiders had a significant weapon in their arsenal, Lester Hayes, and his infamous use of stick'em. Lester Hayes, the cornerback for the 1980 Raiders, led the league with an impressive 13 interceptions during the season contributing to the team's number one ranking in takeaways. He utilized stick'em, a substance that was legal at the time, not only on his hands but all over his body. The 2001 Patriots serve as a testament to the unpredictable nature of football, where underdog teams can overcome mediocrity and secure a championship through a combination of luck and timely plays. Business, winning the Super Bowl marked the beginning of a dynasty. However, in 2001, they were much more than Super Bowl champs. Now, let's shift our focus to another team that defied expectations, the 1980 Oakland Raiders. In the history of Super Bowls, only seven teams have won as wild cards, and the 1980 Oakland Raiders were among them. Typically, division winners are considered stronger, but the Raiders challenged this norm, finishing the regular season at 11-5 and securing the second spot in the AFC West. They weren't exactly a powerhouse. Early in the season, 33-year-old Jim Plinkett was elevated from the bench to starting quarterback. He started 11 games that season, throwing 18 touchdowns and 16 interceptions, nothing particularly spectacular. This unique advantage allowed him to gain possession easily, with instances where even opposing receivers found themselves sticking to him after collisions. The success of the 1980 Raiders can be attributed, in part, to the strategic use of Stickham and the exceptional performance of Lester Hayes. The very next year, the NFL banned Stickham, underscoring its impact on the game. Now, fast forward to 2011, where the title of the worst team to ever win the Super Bowl belongs to the New York Giants. Not only did they secure the championship with a negative point differential in the regular season, but they faced various challenges throughout. Total defense was a glaring weakness for the 2011 Giants, ranking 27th in the league and allowing 3,764 yards per game. Despite their offensive struggles, they managed to win only one game against a team with a winning record during the regular season, the New England Patriots, their eventual Super Bowl opponents. However, they entered the playoffs with momentum, defeating the Atlanta Falcons in the wild card round and the Green Bay Packers in the divisional round. 
The NFC Championship game against the San Francisco 49ers was a testament to their resilience, capitalizing on fumbles and securing a narrow 20-17 victory in overtime. In the Super Bowl, they faced the formidable 13-3 New England Patriots. Despite the odds and the Patriots' desire for revenge from a previous Super Bowl defeat, the Giants prevailed. Their key strengths were a potent defensive line, led by players like Jason Pierre-Paul, Justin Tuck, and OCU Minyayura, who tied for third in the league with 48 sacks during the regular season. Despite a lackluster rushing offense, Eli Manning delivered clutch performances, throwing 29 touchdowns and only 16 interceptions in the regular season. The offensive line, ranked seventh best in sacks allowed, provided crucial protection for Manning, especially during the critical moments of the Super Bowl. Luck also played a role such as a crucial drop pass by Wes Welker in the dying minutes of the game. The Giants capitalized on these moments, and Manning's connection with Mario Manningham down the sideline secured their victory. In conclusion, these teams, despite being considered mediocre or facing various challenges, demonstrated that in the unpredictable world of football, momentum, strategic advantages, and timely plays can lead even an underdog or a seemingly average team to Super Bowl glory. In terms of total defense, the 2011 Giants faced significant challenges, ranking 27th in the league and allowing a substantial 3,764 yards per game. Their rushing offense was particularly lackluster, finishing dead last with a mere 1,427 yards for the entire season. As they entered the playoffs with a 9-7 record, questions lingered about their potential impact. In football, Momentum is a genuine force, and teams on a hot streak entering the playoffs are often more formidable than those with higher seedings. Despite their poorly ranked defense, the Giants boasted a formidable defensive line, consisting of JPP, Justin Tuck, and OCU Minyayora, which was tied for third in sacks during the regular season with an impressive total of 48. Despite a seemingly non-existent rushing attack, Eli Manning had a standout season. Passing for 29 touchdowns and only 16 interceptions, his fourth lowest interception total in a season. The offensive line played a crucial role in the team's success, ranking seventh best in sacks allowed. This strong line protected Eli Manning, enabling him to go through all his reads comfortably. The team had only two pro bowlers, Eli Manning and Jason Pierre-Paul. Even JPP, a standout defensive player, could count their pro bowl representatives on one hand. Adding to the underwhelming statistics, the 2011 Giants managed to beat only one team with a winning record during the regular season, the New England Patriots. Despite this, they benefited from playing in a weak division, facing two 500 teams in the Cowboys and Eagles, along with a 5-win Washington team, whom the Giants lost to twice, including a defeat in Week 9. The Giants' roller coaster regular season saw them starting strong at 6 2, but then enduring a tough stretch, losing five of their next six games, including a four game losing streak. During this skid, they gave up a staggering 49 points to the Saints and 38 points to the Packers, indicating a team seemingly spiraling out of control. However, they finished the season on a strong note, winning their last two games. Manning's favorite target was Victor Cruz who had a breakout season, including a remarkable 99-yard touchdown catch against the Jets in their second-to-last game of the season. In essence, the 2011 Giants, despite their regular season struggles and statistically inimpressive performance, had key strengths in their defensive line and offensive protection. The team set up, with a focus on strong trenches and a passing-oriented strategy, proved effective in a league increasingly favoring aerial attacks. Even without being the most talented, their well-timed hot streak and effective gameplay propelled them to Super Bowl success, showcasing the unpredictable nature of football.